Hey everybody, welcome to Trail Talk. This is leg uh, 13 for me on my 2016 uh, through hike attempt. And uh, this is the leg from Damascus to Atkins, Virginia, which was a 75 mile leg. Whether you go to Marion, which is a day short, or you go to Atkins, um, this, is, this is a great section hike. Very beautiful, a lot of great views, a, lot of, a, lot of, a little bit of challenge, a lot of beauty. Definitely highly recommend it. Um, for me, this was kind of my, my crucible of, of reality. I had gotten to the point where I knew I needed to do now uh, 15 miles. I needed to start doing 15 mile days. And so I planned this 50 miles a day, five days, that's 75 miles. Bought too much food. So I mailed it ahead to Atkins. In the end, that turned out to be a mistake that I would not do again. I would do this a little bit differently. Um, but, and I'll, and I'll explain that towards the end of this. Um, but coming, but uh, this first leg is, is a leg that uh, if you are in a tramily, you know, as trail families, um, you're going to have some, some your purism if you are a purist challenged. And you'll have to know ahead of time that this is coming. Um, when you come out of Damascus, you, um, you're going to come up here. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to almost immediately, you're going to be on the creeper trail for a while as you're, as you're, as you're, as you're leaving. And then you're going to come up and make a left turn across the road and you're going to go up, start climbing up, uh, up to Iron Mountain. Um, you'll notice that eventually you are back to the creeper trail. Okay. So you can do this, you can do all this climbing. Or you can do a 3% grade and do the creeper trail and honestly, you know, be here, be here by noon and keep going and, uh, and camp at the Lost Mountain Shelter at night. And this is what a lot of people do. I decided I wanted to be a purist. And so I was going to stay and go all the way to Lost Mountain. That's not what ended up happening though. Uh, let me just, uh, the, now the views coming out of, of Damascus are, are really, really pretty. And, uh, and it, it was not a wasted event coming up here. Let me let me show you a picture of uh, what that looks like. Now that may not have been exactly the Iron Mountain uh, area, but it was it was close to it. And uh, you can see it's uh, it's very very pretty out there. And the trees are definitely out in leaf now, and the spring is well on its way to summer. Um, now um, as you as you come up to this Saunders Shelter, now there's. In here, if I remember right, there was a bunch of diversions because there was a washed out bridge and there was some detours in here and it actually took you back down to the creeper trail for a while and then and then off the creeper trail and, and then back up and onto, onto the AT. So there was some kind of messing around here with the, with the trail that was happening with the AT in 2016. As you come up to the shelter, this is one of those shelters where um, you know, you, you come, you come point two off the trail and then there's another, tr and there's another trail that leads out. And so the AT comes kind of loops around the side at point four. So if you're a purist, you know, you're going to come in, you're going to come back out. Uh, and because this is like, maybe like a lunchish time or so, I, <laughs> there's no way I wanted to go in there for lunch and come back. So I think I ate on the trail somewhere and, uh, came down and, I was my, my, so my goal was Lost Mountain. It, the weather was starting to kind of change a little bit. It had been raining almost all, well, it had rained all night. It was, had been raining all that morning uh, through here. It had finally stopped raining. And uh, I was coming down and I was kind of out of water and I stopped at this pond campsite thinking I'd probably stay there. The water at the pond was kind of nasty. Now, later on in my hike, water at other sources like that was worse. I probably would have taken water there uh, later on. But at this point in my hike, I had been pretty spoiled with all the good water and decided I would wait in, until I came down to the stream. So I just passed this stream, thinking I'd come down and get water here, this footbridge. And that little stall, small voice said, stop, camp here for the night. I thought to myself, wait a minute, I want to at least get down here to camp maybe, find some place if I can't get up the Lost Mountain. And it just went, no, you stop here for the night. So I I looked over to the right, saw this little knoll, um, walked off the trail, I think maybe, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 feet, climbed up this little knoll, and there's a pure, perfect little campsite there, a little fire pit. Couldn't even see it from the trail. And uh, so I, I set up my tent there and camp, went back, got some water, came back, and 
Uh, that particular video day, I did a little a little video on fire building, and because uh, this is my, I think this is the first time I actually built a fire when I was stealth camping. And so I built a fire for that night, and uh, I think maybe just because I got kind of spooked a little bit with that whole you know stop and camp here thing. So, uh, and I did a little a little video on uh, doing some tortellini, kind of a tortellini soup for dinner. And uh, anyway, uh, that night, huge lightning storm, rain, just rained and rained, and uh, lightning hitting all around. I mean, the thunder was actually like dynamite explosions. It was that close. Um, came down that next day and uh, and hit the, the, the creeper trail. Um, very beautiful hike along here, crossing these, you know, there's some bridges and everything. And then we kind of start back up here to Lost Mountain where I meant to stay that night. Um, you can see, I think I only did 11.4 that day. It was, I was very discouraged that uh, I hadn't even hit my 15 miles. This is a huge shelter area here. There is camping. There's so much camping in this area. And some of the folks that were still there when I came through for kind of an early lunch said that, uh, that in fact, uh, yeah, there was, um, or was it, no, I didn't eat lunch. Maybe I just took my, my mid-morning snack there. They said there were still people there, and they said it was just, there were a lot of people camping <coughs> there. Um, then um, we start, we're going to start a climb up to White Top and up to Buzzard Rocks. Now, something happened. So, you know, I, I cannot remember exactly the details, but somehow I ended up out of water and very dehydrated. It was, it really got hot this day climbing up and, uh, and somewhere past that last, last water source, or it wasn't there, or it was dried up or I missed it or, or something. I, um, I ended up with, um, basically being out of water and very dehydrated and a, and a nice day hiker let me some water so I could I could get I could finish getting up to the top here or maybe or maybe or at least maybe get to this stream so somewhere in here you know I, I didn't get water and I didn't drink and and uh, I was in pretty bad shape climbing up so by the time I got up to the buzzard rocks I was really tired and I remember kind of once again having a kind of stopping there and having a snack and let me show you some of the hikers that were up there Okay, um, most of these hikers, I think, uh, were heading down to Damascus for trail days, except a couple of them were heading heading northbound, and they were heading to the this Thomas Knob shelter. That's where I wanted to go. This is just off the trail going up to Mount Rogers, so this is pretty high. It's a big shelter. It's got a an attic that you climb up to to get up on in top there, and beautiful views. So this is where I wanted to go for the night. Going to make it harder now because I already fell short my my first day. Um, anyway, I got up, to, got up to White Top and spent maybe a little bit too much time there, but in that process, watched these huge thunderstorms starting to develop. So I took off walking and walked about a mile, got, got a whole bunch, got some water, got, got tanked up with water, and realized that, you know what, I am going to really get wet with some really, really cold rain. And I decided I didn't want to have hypothermia, so I decided I would go ahead and camp. So another short day, I uh, camped on top of White Top. I'll, I'll show you some of the the views from from uh, my campsite. Now another reason I decided to stop too is the night before my tent was still soaked, and uh, if I was going to get to Thomas Knob, no problem, because I would just stay in the shelter that night. But I didn't think I could make it, which meant stealth camping somewhere short of that. And uh, with the thunderstorms coming in the rain, there's, uh, that would be really bad to try and put up a, a wet tent in the middle of a rainstorm. That was cold, icy cold rain. So um, I stopped and set up my tent and left the fly off so it could kind of um, dry in the breeze and got it almost, um, well dry enough, put the put the rain flour in real fast, threw my pack in and then got hit with this huge rainstorm. And it rain, rained and blew and I matter of fact it blew so hard that water was coming, was moisture as in rain was getting blown underneath the rain tarp and hitting the screen and I was getting sprayed inside my tent with rain. That's how hard the wind was blowing. Another good reason why you don't Give up your um, winter gear yet.
Parisburg is, is the traditional place to, to send your winter gear home. And when I got to Parisburg, it was still a little on the cold side. We had some cold snaps and I went ahead and held on to some of my gear even a little bit longer. Okay, um, let's see. Um, from there, from 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 the from White Top here, um, it was foggy that next morning. It was wet. It was foggy. We were in the clouds. Uh, came down here to Elk Garden, and this is another place where people would get dropped off to hike back down to Trail Days. Um, I actually kind of took a break. And there's a really nice set of restrooms here at this parking lot. You know, I mean, they're pit toilets, but they're, they're big enough, and they had kind of an area where I could get out of the wind a little bit and kind of uh, and kind of get warmed up. So I took a little bit of refuge there for about 30 minutes or so. Cross across the road, and uh, there's some there's this there's this really pretty bench with a view to the west, and the you know, the bench is there, but the view was not because I was in the clouds. And then started this climb up. And this 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 climb through here is really pretty. A lot of pine trees and and it's just gorgeous. But it was also with all the rain the night before, and it was still kind of misty and drizzling. Um, the trail in parts in, in some places it actually turned to uh, like a little little water little waterfall. And I've got a picture of that. And you can see the water coming down the trail. Okay, so I got the Thomas Knob. Um, took a took a nice lunch here. Uh, the views are really really spectacular. I didn't I didn't want to take the time to hike the extra mile out of the way to go up to uh, to Mount Rogers. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. Um, but the views here were really fantastic from the Knob. And I've got a couple pictures here. I'm going to insert of what that looks like uh, from uh, just just below Mount Rogers there at Thomas Knob. Now those were taken literally as the fog had just parted. I mean, it was it literally the fog had just kind of lifted and that was the first view that, uh, that we ha had that day. And from, and from Thomas Knob then, um, there, there's actually some horses pretty close by. As a matter of fact, this water source is protected by a fence to keep the, to keep the horses away from it, from contaminating it. And around here, there's this is another campsite here. There's there's campsites all around Thomas Knob up in the pine trees, very pretty. All the way through here, there's there's campsites everywhere. You can see once you cross into the park, there's no there's no there's no camping. Now, you you when you get up into here, it really starts to open up, and it kind of reminded me of um, Montana in a way. And I think if I remember right, I have a a couple of uh, photographs. One of them actually is. One of them is kind of going into the park, and the other one is me with my hiking poles that was taken by somebody uh, coming out of the park, which was, hmm, where is kind of the wise shelter? So here, yeah, the boundary down here. So uh, just just coming out of the park down here. So anyway, here's a couple of photographs of that, so you can see what that landscape looks like. Now notice um, there is no tenting in the, in the park, and you wouldn't want to, because even here out of the park, there were still horses all over the place. Actually, I take that back. That's still in the park. Um, um, this is a this is a uh, this is some words of wisdom. Okay, uh, don't take your pack off around the horses. I bet they will come up to you and want to start licking this, your pack because it's got a lot of salt on it and you, you, you've gone 500 miles now, okay? You've gone 500 miles. And, and I made the mistake of wanting to get something out of my pack and I took my pack off and dropped it and it was like, it was like a signal to the horses, hey, here is a, here's a salt lick. And they came, they came literally running over to my pack and were like licking it to death. And it was hard for me to get it away from them. So... So if you need to get so before you cross the fence into the state park, if you, if there's anything you need, take it out then, and uh, um, 
don't don't take your pack off and set it down. Okay, and just be and just be aware they're going to try and, and and start licking your pack straps and stuff to get the salt off of them. All right. Um, now this this shelter down here, uh, this is this is this is a nice area. Uh, there's a lot of tent sites, and you're not supposed to camp. Uh, the Boy Scouts though were were helping themselves to quite a bit of the the, the campsites down there, but the uh, but the through hikers were following the rules, and we we stayed in the shelter. This is where I met Moose Dancer. He's from Colorado. Um, later on, you're going to meet uh, somebody by the name of I know I, I think I never got a picture of Moose Dancer, unfortunately. But uh, Moonfire from Germany, um, I hiked with her for a day, and uh, she knew Moose Dancer. They had actually hiked quite a bit together, and in the end, they hiked almost one third of the trail together. So. Um, anyway, this is where I met uh, Moose Dancer here from the shelter that night. Um, oh man, from there that next day, this is a, this is just a beautiful hike. Okay, you come up uh, up the Stone Mountain. There's just views everywhere. Um, coming down here into the this is that that livestock corral and the scales. This is where um, I think Kansas ended up. Uh, and maybe even I think uh, 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 early riser they got a huge huge snowstorm, and they um, and and Kansas told me I should take refuge in the in the outhouse there. It's a, it's one of those most large Forest Service ones. He actually slept the night in one of those, and had, he actually got some a little bit of frostbite. And then uh, kind of making making the descent down to. Past this old orchard shelter. Now I um I kept going, and uh, I wanted to stay here. I ended up getting to this hurricane. This is kind of an annoying, kind of a purpose. You know, one of those puds, purposeless up and down or pointless up and down. And I'm sorry, that's guys. So I just I still remember coming in, crossing this, having to climb this thing up. You kind of you kind of walk around the top of the mountain from from one end, kind of walk around the other end, and you come back down again to Hurricane. And this is a huge shelter. Um, it says eight, but it it I think it probably could probably accommodate ten. But what's nice about it is it had a big overhang with the picnic tables underneath. You could you could weather you could weather out a big storm here and still be able to sit at the picnic table and eat and cook and and not get wet. Very very nice shelter. Well done, guys. All right, and uh, so I, I stayed the night there, and uh, oh, let's see. Um, my next goal was, and this is a twenty-mile. This is a twenty-mile leg. It's to get to the uh, the partnership shelter. The partnership shelter is kind of a, a neat shelter. In that it, I mean, it has it. It's it's by the visitor center for Mount Rogers. Okay, there's parking there. There's there's actually showers there if it's the right time of year. It's huge. There's there's, there's sleeping down below and sleeping up upstairs. You can call and get pizza, and it was like I've got to do it. I've got to do it. So that was a 20 mile hike for me that day. So I took off and. Um, and uh, made made actually very very good very very good progress. I came down here. Actually, ate lunch down here at the the Trimpy Shelter. This is a cool stone shelter with a fireplace inside, um, and a lot of camping spots and a lot of hammocking spots. Very 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 nice. Highly recommended. Um, once you kind of come out of here, there's a really nice pasture. You kind of you kind of walk through, if I remember right. Uh, I have a picture of it in here. I might uh, I might show it to you a little bit later, kind of a representing a, what I call the start of the, the Shire walking here through this part of Virginia. Um, and let's see. So long day for me, twenty miles. It was long, but this the, but this was not bad. I mean, this is this is just kind of very gradual, some ups and downs. Uh, very, you know, very kind of a gradual descent into the partnership shelter. But I got there late, not really too late, but after everybody else had ordered their pizza and had eaten, 
And so when I went to call for pizza, well, it was $35 minimum order. Well, everybody else had, had put their pizza orders together, and so they met the $35 requirement. I didn't want pizza that bad that I was going to pay $35 for pizza, so I passed. And it was kind of disappointing because that was my motivation to get there. But then a through hiker from last year uh, showed up, and she had her car and she offered to take a few of us into town that had, had missed the opportunity to have pizza. And we went in and we actually, we got passed on the pizza, but we actually went to like a, a KFC or something like that, or a Wendy's or, or both. And, and, uh, so, so she, she was nice. She's a little trail angel for us and took us in to get every supply anyway. Now Moose Dancer, he caught a taxi in and he went to a hotel here and did his resupply and then came back out and I met him as, as I was hiking the next day coming out of Marion um, and so let's see uh, we kind of we kind of hiked uh, Moose Dancer and I and a couple other people we kind of hiked kind of the same way same direction uh, through this next day and I had that package at Atkins I wanted to stop and get that resupply package uh, needed to get the post office by three and by the time I hit Atkins it was two o'clock and Everybody else wanted to eat at the barn, and I'll show you. I'll show you a picture of what the barn looks like. Okay, so you come out of, you come out down here through a, an area that looks like a lot like the Shire, and you cross these railroad tracks, and and you hit you hit the barn restaurant. Okay, that sits right here, and. Uh, now the Relax Inn, kind of a dive. Some people were staying there, heard it wasn't a really great experience, um, but it's convenient to the trail, okay? And honestly, I had, I had, I wish I had just gone in to Marion, okay, to do my resupply. You see there's, there's plenty of stuff here in Marion. Um, here, the post office is way down here. See that scale, 4.3 miles, so the post office is way down here. But, and I decided, you know, I don't want to do the relax in. If I get to go all the way this way, I'll just go to the comfort in. Okay, they had a hike, a pretty good hiker rate. So, that's what I ended up doing. And so, I went I went to the I went to the restaurant with everybody. We ate, said our goodbyes. Um, I started heading down the road, trying to hitchhike, trying to hitchhike, trying to hitchhike. Finally gave up, just started walking. All of a sudden, a van pulled over and uh, had a couple of hikers in it and their parents and they asked where I was going. I said to the comfort in, they said, well, get in, that's where we're going. So I ended up getting a ride finally and they dropped me off at the comfort in. And I asked about laundry and they said I had to go all the way down, I had to go back to the laundromat. Well, I missed the post office, so I was gonna, I was committed now to stay the night. Um, so I walked down, did my laundry, went over to the Dollar General, did my, my resupply from my next leg and and was able to get a ride back and th this is the more successful way to get a ride is you can you kind of hang around and talk with people and they, they want to know what you're doing and you tell them you're you're through hiking and they think that's cool and you ask them which way they're going if they say hey i'm heading back this way I said hey can you drop me off at the comfort inn and that's the best way to get a ride to be honest with you than to try and put out your thumb and hitchhike so i so i got a ride back now now i'm gonna wait for the post office to open the next morning and i get up and it's just raining it's just raining it's gonna rain all day long just miserable um so i'm trying to find a way to get down to the post office and my only my only um, option at this point in the rain because i didn't want to walk down there you know in my nice clean clothes <laughs> <laughs> is to pay for a taxi ride. It turned out to be about a $20 ride. All right, and because it was $20 because the taxi came from Marion. Okay, and when the next day when it came time to get a ride back down to the trail, the taxi came from Marion. So for the $20 I, I, that I spent putting food in the mail, it cost me that $20 plus a taxi ride of $20 and another taxi ride of $20. So that's $60 for $20 worth of food. Okay, what I should have done is when I got to Marion, I should have just, that I should have gone into resupply there, 
that next, I should have just that next day, I should have called up the post office, bounced my bucket box ahead and just kept going. Or worst case, just stay here at the Relax Inn. So, I mean, this cost me a zero. I ended up spending a zero here that day because of the rain and, and, um, you know, and, and, and a host hotel stay of $80 times two nights, $160. So was that $20 box of food worth it? Should I have, should I have just abandon it? Put it in the hiker box in Damascus or, you know, bounce it ahead? All those options are better than what I ended up doing. And that's kind of my, my lesson learned. So, okay, everybody. Um, hope this helps. Um, once again, this is a this is a really great section hike through this this area. It's a nice 75 miles, easy on, easy off. You know, you're gonna be right there by the interstate, uh, right there by uh, Highway 11. Um, perfect, perfect, perfect section hike. Nice 75 miles. All right, everybody. Um, Till next time. Okay. Um, I forgot to show you this. This is really cool. Um, as you as you as you're coming down, there is um, let's see where did it go? The Settlers Museum right here. You come out of the you come out of the out out of the the woods, and uh, you come up to an old um, the the Settlers Museum. You come up to a school, and there there's a sign basically saying there's trail magic, and you can go into the school, and um, um, it's it's uh, it's really cool. They've they've got sodas in there and snacks in there, and uh, they actually have a, a message board in there. And there was a message for somebody uh, to call home that the, their dad had, had a heart attack and trying to get a hold of them. So they had left a left a message in there, and uh, so this is pretty cool. Plus, I think I forgot to show you what the what the trail kind of looks like as it as it as it goes through the woods uh, or through the through the fields and that feeling of the Shire, if you will, of, of this part of the trail. All right, so with that, we'll see you next time.